Number 10. The Alaskan Tiger Deep in the dense wilderness of wild Alaska, there's a legendary beast known as the Alaskan Tiger. It's also known by another name, the White Death. This massive feline allegedly lives in the swampy areas near Paxson. In native legends, the ferocious cat has been around for centuries. Each time it kills a human, a stripe appears across its back. There haven't been many sightings of the Alaskan Tiger in recent years, and some say this is because it sticks to its swampy terrain where humans don't wander. Others have claimed that there was indeed a Siberian tiger that had somehow made its way into Alaska, where it hunted the native people. At least this is where they say the legend came from. It's highly unlikely that a tiger made it to Alaska in modern times, though. However, thousands of years ago when North America was still connected to Russia, it's very possible that a saber-toothed tiger or even a Siberian tiger made it across the land bridge and preyed on the early humans who settled in Alaska, though the chances of it being alive today are pretty slim. But knowing how vast the state is, do you think it's really that impossible? Number 9. The Tijarook The Tijarook is a legendary sea beast that some say lives in the freezing coastal waters around Nunavak Island in the Bering Sea off the western coast of Alaska. Reports of the Tijarook have been made for hundreds and hundreds of years. Local Alaskans believed it hunted and killed anyone who dared enter the water around Nunavak Island. Then in 1983, Roy P. Mackle, who had been researching unknown aquatic animals at the time, was told by personnel with the Coast Guard that there had been recent sightings of a strange animal in the area but that it was probably just some kind of leopard seal. At the same time, there were local reports that a woman had just been killed by the Tijarek after it caused her boat to capsize. To be honest, the description of the Tijarek does match oddly well to the description of a leopard seal. It's supposed to be around 8 feet 2.4 meters long with a snake-like head and a flipper. It's usually seen in bays, not really in the open ocean, and it can be attracted by tapping on the side of a boat. In all likelihood, this legendary sea monster is nothing more than a leopard seal turned into something mystical through local stories and myths. Or is it? Number 8. The Thunderbird The Thunderbird is a legendary Alaskan animal that's a bit tougher to explain than a potential seal. As recently as 2018, a woman driving through Alaska witnessed a massive bird that she claimed had a wingspan wider than the road. Another sighting came back before this in 2013 when two friends were walking through the forest only to be startled by a huge blackbird flying overhead. The two friends claimed the bird had a wingspan of no less than 10 feet, 3 meters. Throughout the years, sightings of the Thunderbird have been consistent and frequent. The sightings go back hundreds of years to the Native Americans, who often blamed Thunderbirds for abducting their small children. The big question for scientists is, where exactly such a monstrous bird could hide? It's a lot of mountains and forest, but is it really possible that some kind of dwelling for such a large predatory beast has never been found? Another thing is that the Thunderbird has been seen all the way from Alaska to Pennsylvania and there's just no way it could ever cover so much distance without actually being documented on photographs. Most mainstream scientists say there is no Thunderbird and people are merely witnessing eagles and vultures, which to the untrained eye can look like giants. On the other hand, there could for all we know really be a mythical bird with a 10 to 20 foot, 3 to 6 meter wingspan hiding in the great Alaskan wilderness. Alaska's so big that if there were only one or two of them, we may never find them. Do you believe in the Thunderbird? If not, what do you think these people really saw? Let me know in the comments section down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. Haunted West High School Monster birds and terrifying sea monsters aren't the only things that plague Alaska. Some claim that the Anchorage West High School is haunted by a ghost known locally as the Lady in White. She's been seen by countless witnesses for the past few decades. Sometimes she can be seen standing in complete silence in the empty seats of the auditorium as if waiting for a show to go on. Sometimes she's witnessed fleeing through the corridors. And creepiest of all, some students have witnessed the ghost lurking in the dark corners of the stage and even in the dimly lit basement. David Block, a theater teacher at the school, claims that he has never actually seen a ghost and that he doesn't believe in the lady in white. At the same time, he does admit that all the sightings brought forward by students maintain an eerie consistency. The sightings are almost always described as the same. The lady in white is always spotted wearing wispy white clothing, and she's always seen slipping out of sight before anyone can get a proper look. And yet, despite her being in the school for so long, nobody can say who she was in life or where she originally came from. Plus, nobody has any idea what the ghost wants. Number 6. King Bear In 2014, archaeologists uncovered a giant polar bear skull in Alaska. Experts were quick to point out that the skull did not match any modern polar bear. To this day, it's the biggest and strangest polar bear skull ever found. Slender, oddly shaped, too long in the back and structurally inconsistent. It's actually led some people to believe that the legendary King Bear from Inuit mythology could have been a real species of bear. 
Radiocarbon dating placed the origin of the skull between the years 670 and 800 AD. But they haven't figured out just what yet makes the skull so different from modern beasts. As for king bear, this was a species of bear described by the Inuit to be over 12 feet, 3.6 meters long, and far larger than any other bear on the planet. The timeline even matches up, since many ancient cultures have been living in the area for over 1400 years, like the Burnett culture who used to hunt whales all the way from Siberia to Alaska. It looks like there may have truly been a bizarre species of giant polar bears, though why they went extinct, nobody can say for sure. Number 5. Bigfoot this list of legendary Alaskan creatures wouldn't be complete without mentioning Bigfoot. Bigfoot is the most popular legendary creature that lives in Alaska today. Unlike some of the other mythical beasts believed to prowl the icy wasteland of Alaska, Bigfoot has been sighted all throughout the west coast of Canada and even down into the US, with some of the earliest reported sightings coming from the 1900s, not including the original tales told by the Native Americans. Bigfoot has been sighted in dozens of places throughout Alaska, in 1920, a man in Nulato died after being mauled by a massive creature that was described as standing on two feet and being very much like a human. In 1943, there was a report of a man being attacked by an unknown creature in the wilderness about 18 miles, 29 kilometers down the Yukon from the town of Ruby. The man later died of internal injuries and the creature that attacked him, presumably Bigfoot, was said to be chased off by his dog team. In 1966, a man near Doll Creek followed some strange footprints into the woods and then shot at a creature that he claimed was some kind of mix between a man and a bear, though the body was never recovered. These sightings go on and on, and yet despite there being dozens, even hundreds of convincing Bigfoot sightings, not a single proper photograph has ever been taken, leading mainstream scientists to dismiss all Bigfoot claims as nothing but hysteria. What do you think? Is Bigfoot real? And if so, is he or she living in Alaska? Number 4. Kalupalik. The Kalupalik is a creature of Inuit legend. It's the closest thing Alaska has to a mythical mermaid. But unlike mermaids spoken of by European sailors and Caribbean pirates, the Kalupalik is a horrifying monster. It's in no way attractive. Forget about a pale, beautiful blonde woman with the legs of a fish. The Kalupalik is an aquatic humanoid with bumpy skin, fins sticking out of its head and back, webbed hands, and sharp claws for killing. This terrifying mermaid beast also stinks like sulfur and rotten duck. In addition to being disgusting and scary, the Kalupala walks around with an amatic on its back. The amatic is what Inuit women use to wear to carry around their babies. The Kalupalik wears it to have an easier time snatching babies. This is one of those stories that Inuit parents told their children, probably as a way to keep them from wandering into the frozen waters around Alaska. They warned them never to go near the water if they heard a humming noise, which was a warning of imminent danger. If the Kalupalik were to get a hold of a child, they would certainly stick them in their amatic and take them away forever. Number 3. The Iliamna Lake Monster In the Iliamna Lake, located on the Alaskan Peninsula, is a terrifying monster. This lake is huge, 77 miles, 124 kilometers long, and over 1,000 feet deep in some places. It's the largest lake in all of Alaska and definitely big enough to hold a few monsters. The lake was even named after the Iliamna Monster, which is supposedly a mythical black fish that inhabits the lakes and bites holes out of kayaks, though only if you're bad. If you're good, you can kayak across the lake without any worries. But here's the deal with the Iliamna Lake Monster. Natives have been talking about deadly giant fish here for a long time. And visiting scientists are even convinced that something huge is living in the lake. Plenty of witnesses have seen a dark creature that looks kind of like a shark, almost 20 feet 6 meters in length. Sometimes they're even spotted in groups, probably hunting together. And even though nobody's caught a photograph of one or hooked one on the end of their fishing line, that doesn't mean they don't exist. So what is the monster? Marine ecologist Bruce Wright says it could be a sleeper shark that is adapted to living inside a freshwater lake. On the other hand, he also says it could be a gargantuan northern pike the likes of which no fisherman has ever seen. But until someone catches it, we simply won't know for sure. Number 2. Aliens Aliens have been seen in the skies above Alaska ever since people had eyes to see them. Alaska is considered the hottest UFO hotspot in North America. Coupled with the very preposterous number of vanished people every year, there's a serious chance that extraterrestrial visitors could be using Alaska as their hunting ground, probably for abducting people. Of course, nobody has any proof of this, but there was a strange report by Alaska Highway News saying that officials discovered a spacecraft crashed into the forest near Peace River. According to them, the wreckage of the UFO is proof that Alaska has been used as an interplanetary runway for centuries. They even said that archaeologists dated the wreckage as being at least 20,000 years old. Unfortunately, it later came out that the article was actually published on April Fool's Day. But even though there was no UFO crash site found by archaeologists, there have still been hundreds of reports that aliens do indeed visit Alaska. 
If you pay close attention to the sky at night, you may even see the glowing, oblong shapes of their crafts zipping overhead. Number 1. The Tornit The Tornit are a race of giant bushmen spoken of in Inuit mythology. Stories of the Tornit have been spoken of since humans first arrived in Alaska. Over 10,000 years ago, the Inuit and the Tornit supposedly lived together in peace. They shared hunting grounds and socialized with one another. But then the Inuit people began making kayaks and the Tornit didn't. They were jealous of the Inuit and their kayaking skills. When a young Tornit asked to borrow a kayak from his Inuit friend, he then accidentally damaged it. The Inuit became angry and stabbed the young Tornit to death while he slept. The rest of the Tornit people feared the Inuit would come after them next, so they ran away into the wilderness and have never been seen again. The Inuit then became fearful of the forest. Sometimes when their hunters went too deep into the woods alone, they would never return. And it was almost always blamed on the angry Tornit who had taken up residence in the snowy trees. There's never been any archaeological proof that a race of large people lived alongside the Inuit for any period of time. However, the Tornit could definitely be based on another band of human settlers whom the Inuit had chased out of their territory. Number 10. Mysterious Giant Python In 2019, when forest fires ravaged across Indonesia, something strange was discovered in the aftermath. The bodies of some of the longest and fattest snakes ever seen were found burnt to a crisp by local residents who were battling the raging fires. People weren't the only ones in turmoil because of the thick smoke and hot flames. Animals in the forest also burned, and with the forest going up in a blazing inferno, some animals had no escape. These enormous snakes were literally burned alive. And while that's obviously quite tragic, what's truly shocking is just how huge these snakes were. It's as if a massive group of gigantic snakes had been living in the forest undetected. Most experts agree that the burned snakes belong to the python family, probably Burmese pythons. They were estimated at being over 30 feet 9 meters in length. That's unheard of for any living snake today. Even the green anaconda almost never grows to be 30 feet 9 meters. The biggest of all the charred corpses allegedly measured an incredible 32 feet 10 meters in length. However, because the animals were already dead, they don't qualify to break any official records. Number 9. Freshwater Stingray The giant freshwater stingray is about half the size of a school bus. The thing is absolutely gargantuan. It weighs over half a ton and it's so strong that it's been known to pull boats underwater. It can grow to be over 15 feet 4.5 meters in length. Perhaps the most shocking thing about the giant freshwater stingray is that it was first discovered just a couple of years ago in 2004. It wasn't confirmed as a new species until 2006 with help from the World Wildlife Foundation and the Smithsonian Institute. The stingray is wide and flat with a whip for a tail, and experts say it hasn't changed a single bit in millions of years. But how could such a beastly creature live for so long without being identified? The truth of the matter is that giant freshwater rays live in the muck at the bottom of rivers and estuaries. They bury themselves in the slime on the bottom where they're essentially invisible to humans. They then hunt using special sensors on their body that can detect other animals' electrical fields. In other words, they hunt almost with a sixth sense. These things never need to leave the bottom of the river. But if you step on one, it'll most likely stab you with its barb and inject you full of deadly poison. So watch your step. Number 8. Giant Amazon Ant The giant Amazon ant is the biggest ant in the entire world. It lives throughout the Amazon and the Andes from Colombia all the way to Paraguay. It can grow to be almost 2 inches, 5 centimeters in length, longer than some of your pinky fingers. It's been compared in size to the modern hummingbird. This doesn't sound very big, but it's huge in the world of ants. One of the most fascinating things about the giant Amazon ant is that it has evolved beyond morphologically distinct queens. They still have an alpha female that rules the ant kingdom, it's just a position earned in a slightly different way than being born into it. A young female becomes alpha, her ovaries swell, and she turns into the queen. However, she's referred to as the alpha female instead of queen. And if she dies, another lowly worker ant can then take her place. Male ants have wings and the female ants don't. Wingless females wait around the entrance of the nest and only mate with visiting males. When the mating is finished, the female will then chew through the male ant's stomach to get away from him, leaving his ripped-off genitalia inside of her. This acts as a type of plug to keep other male ants from trying to mate with her again. What do you think of the giant Amazon ant's mating methods? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. Chili the Cow Chili the cow is an absolute colossus. He lives at the Fern Animal Sanctuary in England where he spends his days eating fresh grass and doing a whole lot of nothing. What a life! But he stands 6 feet and 6 inches tall, making him a giant among bovines. And no, he's not on steroids. He just so happens to be 18 inches, 45 centimeters taller than a regular cow. And he probably weighs about 2,750 pounds, 1,247 kilograms. If this sanctuary were to butcher Chili up for his meat, he could make around 14,000 Big Macs. Chili could essentially feed 14,000 people. 
Where did such a beast of a cow come from, you ask? When he was only six days old, he was dropped outside the sanctuary like an abandoned dumpster baby. He was left with four other cows and has been looked over by the sanctuary ever since. His brothers and sisters grew to be a completely normal size, while Chili kept growing until he became a veritable giant cow. Currently, a cow named Blossom is the world's tallest cow, reaching 6 feet 4 inches, 1.9 meters. But the Guinness Book of Records is preparing to formally measure Chili, at which point he may surpass Blossom and become the largest cow alive. Number 6. Giant Giraffe Monster Some of the biggest, most unbelievable animals have already gone extinct. Take the giant giraffe monster, for example. This extinct giraffe had lived in the Himalayan foothills and was larger than an African elephant. It is survived today by the giraffe and the okapi. Some scientists say it might be the largest mammal that ever walked the earth. The name of this monster is the Civitherium giganteum. Maybe not a very exciting name, but that's what it was called all the same. The animal originated during the late Miocene period in Africa and lived throughout the last ice age, only going extinct about 8,000 years ago. This means that some of our human ancestors undoubtedly lived with the giant giraffe and maybe even hunted it. Skeletons of the creature have been found dating back 1 million years. It stood about 7.2 feet, 2.1 meters at the shoulder, but seeing as it's a monster giraffe, its head was easily 10 feet, 3 meters off the ground. It also weighed over 1,000 pounds, 455 kilograms. Can you imagine if we still had these giant giraffes today? Number 5. Cinerus Vulture The Cinerus Vulture is one of the biggest scavengers in the world. This is not a bird you want to fight for scraps. It has an extremely strong hooked beak designed specifically for tearing raw chunks of meat from carcasses. Yikes! This is a dangerous animal that could easily rip your face off. But they won't make a mess of themselves while doing so because like other vultures, they lack feathers on the tops of their heads. While they may seem gross and terrifying, they actually help clean up the environment. They're the cleanup crew of the planet. They live primarily in regions throughout southern and eastern Europe, the Middle East, Central Asia, and into Mongolia and southern China. Because of the vulture's long wings measuring between 39 and 43 inches, 100 to 110 centimeters, giving it a wingspan of up to 9.5 feet, 2.8 meters, it has the exceptional ability to soar incredibly high in the air. It also doesn't need to flap its wings very often because they're so huge. It simply glides around all day searching for dead animals. According to the Denver Zoo, Cinerus vultures have been spotted by hikers on Mount Everest at altitudes of over 23,000 feet, 7,010 meters. That's 4 miles, 6.4 kilometers high. Being up that high enables them to spot potential meals very easily. Good thing they like animals that are already dead, or you and I and our pets might be in trouble. Number 4. The Titan Beetle The Titan Beetle is the biggest beetle in the entire world. It's huge and surprisingly not that creepy, unless of course you're terrified of beetles. It can grow to be almost 7 inches, 17 centimeters, which is bigger than most people's palms. It's also quite prolific. You can find titan beetles throughout all the tropical rainforests of South America, especially in places like Brazil and Colombia. But despite its huge size and armor plating, the titan beetle isn't all that dangerous. It can hiss loudly to scare off predators, and it has sharp spines on its body and jaws so powerful they can snap a pencil in half. But luckily for us, it isn't that aggressive. You're more likely to die from a mosquito than from a titan beetle. What does the biggest beetle in the world eat? How about nothing at all? Titan beetle larvae feast on dead wood underground. They turn into adults and spend just a few weeks alive without ever eating. Scientists don't fully understand why. It's believed that adult titan beetles live all their lives off the calories consumed and stored when they're in their larval form. <laughs> I wish I could. Number 3. Giant Sea Cow There was once a giant cow swimming through the Pacific Ocean, and this cow was about 30 feet, 9 meters long, and weighed over 10 tons, 20,000 pounds. It was a phenomenal swimmer and spent the majority of its time just like any other cow, taking it easy and grazing on grass. This grass just so happened to be underwater. Unfortunately, the stellar sea cow has been extinct for at least the last 250 years. A lot of people don't realize that such a megalithic monster even existed, and not all that long ago. Scientists are still struggling to find out all they can about the ancient sea cows. Of course, these underwater bovines were absolutely no relation to farm cows. They didn't look the same, nor were they harvested for milk or meat. There are even sea cows still alive today, such as the dugong that lives in Southeast Asia. If you've ever seen a dugong, you have a rough idea of what stellar sea cow once looked like, except that it was over three times as large. Holy sea cow! According to the BBC, the first sighting of a stellar sea cow was in 1741 during a sailing expedition in the Bering Sea. The ship was marooned and the sailors survived by hunting down a giant sea cow and eating it. At the same time, they estimated about 1,500 living around the island. But unfortunately, that number has now been reduced to zero. The last one was killed in 1768, less than 30 years after the island and the species was discovered. Number 2. The Walking Croc Believe it or not, there used to be terrestrial crocodiles. 
What this means is a crocodile with longer legs used well for running on land once existed. If you thought modern crocodiles are deadly, imagine one with big muscular legs about as tall as a person and more formidable than any big cat alive today. To be totally honest, you'd have a better chance fighting a pride of lions than a single terrestrial crocodile. One of the last terrestrial crocodiles to live on our planet was the Quincana. It only went extinct about 40,000 years ago, which is nothing in the cosmic scope of things. It's believed that the Quincana went extinct around the same time that humans arrived in Australia. Its vanishing also coincides with many other large animals disappearing into thin air on the Australian continent. This made researchers truly consider just how efficient early humans were at wiping out entire species. There are two main things about the Quincana that make it truly impressive. First, it lived entirely on land. It didn't use water for hunting, so no death rolls like our modern crocodiles and alligators today. Secondly, it had teeth like knives with serrated edges that worked to rip open the soft bodies of mammals. A single bite would result in imminent death, whether you bled out immediately or limped away somewhere and bled out slowly. The largest of the Quincana could grow to be over 18 feet, 5.4 meters long. Number 1. Southern Elephant Seal The southern elephant seal, something that looks like a melted puppy dog stuffed into a soggy hot dog, is actually the largest carnivoran in the world. A carnivoran is just a hairy carnivore. The elephant seal, though it may not look that big, is actually six times larger than a polar bear. The southern elephant seal is also twice as large as the northern elephant seal. So yes, there's a huge difference when talking about elephant seals from the north and from the south. In fact, animals are classified differently, normally for very good reasons. But just how huge does this oddly adorable and equally repulsive carnivore get? The males can grow up to be around 20 feet, 6 meters long, weighing up to 8,000 pounds. Females are smaller, with the largest and most powerful male seals developing harems of many females, becoming the only male allowed to mate in the whole region. Basically, male southern elephant seals are kind of dirtbag. Number 10. The Giants of Patagonia Have you ever heard the story of Ferdinand Magellan? He was an explorer from 500 years ago who was the first European to sail all the way around the world, and his records of the things he saw were absolutely legendary. In 1520, he made a critical stop in Patagonia where he witnessed something unbelievable, a real-life giant. The giant was found singing and dancing on the shore with his other giant friends when Magellan and his crew spied them from the boat. According to the legend, Magellan ordered one of his crew to approach the giants and sing and dance with them to show solidarity and to demonstrate friendship. The giant was apparently friendly. It was also so huge that the Europeans only reached up to its waist. Magellan called the giant and his giant kin Patagones. This is why Patagonia literally translates to Land of the Giants, or more specifically, Land of the Bigfoot, seeing as Pata translates to foot in Portuguese. It's been said that Magellan captured two of the giants and then took them back to bring them to Europe, but they died on the voyage home, and their bodies were dumped in the ocean. To this day, we don't really know if there were giants in Patagonia, or if they all perished from European diseases quickly after they met Magellan and his crew. However, they were described even after Magellan with other explorers to South America and the region of Patagonia witnessing very large people. But as the years went on, the giants got smaller and smaller. In 1615, Dutch explorers found the remains of people who were 10 feet tall. In the 1760s, Captain John Byron encountered giants that were 9 feet tall. Even later, the French explorer Louis de Bougainville reported that the tallest person in all of Patagonia was hardly even 6 feet tall. The question here is, were there even giants to begin with? And if so, how did they shrink? Did the largest ones all die out? Number 9. Giants in China In China, a graveyard of giants was just uncovered recently. The graveyard was found filled with skeletons over 5,000 years old and measuring almost 6 feet. And while this may seem short to our standards of today, this was a very long time ago when Neolithic people were usually very small which makes this finding a bit peculiar to researchers. The Neolithic population back then was not even five and a half feet tall, 1.7 meters. What this means is that whoever these strange people were, they were literal giants of their time. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, the tallest among them was rumored to be over nine feet tall, three meters, taller than everyone on Earth right now. But why did these people get so big? Researchers have one theory, but it's a bit shaky. They claim that people may have grown to such fantastic heights because they were rich and had access to better foods. The tombs they were found in suggest they were indeed wealthy. However, these people may have just been from a lineage of giants. We may never know for sure. Number 8. The Smithsonian Cover-Up 
There may have been a race of giants living in Wisconsin hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Their bodies were allegedly discovered in a burial mound near Lake Delavan back in 1912. From what little records we have to go off of, we know that the big site was overseen by Belois College and that there were at least 200 mounds all part of a mysterious woodland culture from the 8th century. The strangest part about the bodies uncovered here was how large they were. Some of them apparently had elongated skulls, while the skeletons themselves stood between 7.5 feet and 10 feet, 2.5 meters and 3 meters tall. This would make them certifiable giants. But the oddities didn't stop at just being huge. They also had double rows of teeth, six fingers and six toes, and may have lived much longer than the average human of today. However, there's no physical evidence right now that this ever happened. Some say that the giants were actually covered up by scientists working with the Smithsonian Institution. There's a belief that the real skeletons were either destroyed or hidden by scientists back in the early 20th century to keep the public from ever knowing that the giants were real. Where do you stand on this theory? Number 7. Proof of Nephilim one of the oldest written mentions of giants goes back to the Bible with the description of the Nephilim. So what are the Nephilim and are they real? They have been described as the sons of God who procreated with the daughters of men. This exact description in the Bible has been interpreted in quite a few different ways. Daughters of men definitely refers to human women. But sons of God has been interpreted as meaning angels or, depending on who you ask, extraterrestrials. No matter which way you slice it, some believe that the Nephilim were giant hybrids between human and some other type of life form. Unfortunately, there's never been any proof that Nephilim walked the face of the earth. But that said, not everything in the Bible has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. For those who believe, the mere mention of them in the Bible is proof enough. For others who believe the Bible is a host of stories, the Nephilim are still proof that giants once walked the earth and that people over 2,000 years ago knew of their existence. But if true, just where did they go? And where are their bones today? Could their remains be hidden under the Vatican? Or somewhere else? Number 6. Megalithic Peru the megalithic walls of the complex of Sacsayhuaman may be proof that giants once lived in ancient Peru. This site is famous for having some of the largest stone boulders used in an ancient construction. The stones here are absolutely massive, and some people speculate that the only way the ancient people could have lifted them into place would have been if they were giants. Of course, normal-sized humans with ancient tools would never have been able to build something like this fortress, right? Even more incredible is that the stones have been found to fit so closely together that you can't even insert a thin piece of paper between the cracks. The precision is simply outstanding. Plus, the stones are all oddly shaped. They're not just square blocks. Instead, some are hexagons, some are circular, and they're all perfectly set into one another. Either these people were giants, or they had some special technology that we don't know about today. The method used to get such precision has been debated for decades. Some say ancient people used a mysterious liquid to soften the stones. Some claim the people were visited by aliens who gave them increased knowledge of engineering. Others say that the race of people who lived here were actually giant. They have long since gone extinct, and that was why they were able to easily transport the stones to the site, some of which weighed hundreds of tons. Number 5. Giant of Castle Now The giant of Castle Now is the biggest known human that ever existed. Back in 1890, three bone fragments were discovered in the dirt covering a Bronze Age burial dating back to the Neolithic period. There was a humerus, a tibia, and a femoral midshaft. Judging by the size of the three bones, the human they once belonged to was estimated to be somewhere around 11.5 feet tall, 3.5 meters tall. Now, there's never been a proper scientific study published about the alleged giant bones, but we do know that they exist. They were found at a cemetery in France, though the rest of the bones were never discovered, leading scientists to wonder what happened to the rest of the body. Some have speculated that the bones may have belonged to some kind of mutated human with a morbid growth defect. Others claim they belonged to a race of men living in Europe that had grown to around 15 feet tall, 4.5 meters. The only issue is that no other bones have been found, and nobody knows why only three leg bones were discovered in the dirt, not even buried in the actual grave. Number 4. Greek Giants The ancient Greeks spoke frequently of giants beginning over 2,000 years ago. To the Greeks, giants were very real creatures who lived and died, and whose bones were sometimes discovered buried in the dirt. In Greek myth, giants originated as the children of Uranus and Gaia, powerful beings that ruled the earth before being overthrown by the gods with Zeus in the lead. This bit of mythology is obviously exaggerated. It's unlikely that a lightning-wielding god ever fought a race of supergiants. However, the Greeks did have a very logical reason for believing in giants. It's because they found so many giant bones. But here's the issue. The bones found by the Greeks were probably those of mammoths, mastodons, and other huge creatures that once lived in the region and that the Greeks had no idea existed. Each time they pulled an enormous mammoth bone out of the ground, they assumed it once belonged to a huge person. They actually thought that giants could grow over 300 feet tall, 100 meters tall, because they would mash up all the old animal bones they found and assume they belonged to the same giant. 
not even considering that the bones were just part of an extinct hairy elephant. We know that the Greeks were tricked by the remains of ancient animals. However, there's always the chance that somewhere along the way, one of the bones they found really had belonged to a huge person, though probably not hundreds of feet tall. Number 3. The Roman Colossus the Roman Colossus is yet another real-life giant that definitely lived. To date, he's the oldest complete skeleton ever found afflicted with gigantism. His remains were found near Rome during an excavation in 1991. He stood 6 feet and 8 inches tall and lived during the 3rd century AD. At the time, the average male only grew to be about 5.5 feet tall, 1.7 meters tall. This guy would have been a certifiable freak and a true titan among men. The only difference with this guy is that he had gigantism, a very rare medical condition that causes a person's bones to keep growing way after they should stop, thanks to an overproduction of a growth hormone. According to National Geographic, the Roman Colossus died between 16 and 20, probably due to cardiovascular disease associated with gigantism. He was also discovered buried in a typical grave with absolutely no interesting grave goods, suggesting he was just an ordinary guy in society. If you were a Roman supergiant, what would you have done? Would you have fought in the Colosseum? Or perhaps led an army of soldiers to terrorize neighboring countries? Or would you have tried to become a celebrity and run for the Senate? Tell me what you think you'd do in the comments down below. Then remember to subscribe to American Eye if you haven't already for more incredible videos just like this one. Number 2. A Giant Footprint A footprint was discovered just a few years ago in China that could be true proof that giants once roamed through Asia. The footprint obviously belonged to a person. It looks just like any ordinary footprint, only significantly larger. It was found by photographers while trekking through a remote region of the Guizhou province, and they measured it at being 22 inches long. This would suggest that the person who left the footprint, which was discovered fossilized in a slab of rock, would have been slightly more than 13 feet, 4 meters tall. Unfortunately, there haven't been any bones in China discovered that match the footprint. There are no important archaeological sites near it either, and there was no additional footprint to be found. It could be a fake, or it could be evidence of something researchers have yet to piece together. It's left scientists with what you might call a giant of a mystery. Number 1. A Giant Pharaoh In ancient Egypt, there was a giant pharaoh. A new study has shown that the pharaoh Sa Nacht may have been one of the oldest human giants. His skeleton was found in 1901 inside of a tomb, with initial estimates placing his bones as being from the 3rd Dynasty, or 2700 BC. Measuring the bones, scientists realized that this guy stood over 6 feet tall. This was significantly taller than any other Egyptian living during those days. According to live science, the tallest pharaoh other than Sa Nacht was Ramesses II, who stood 5 foot 9 inches, 1.8 meters tall. But he lived over a thousand years after. So how did Sa Nacht become such a huge person? There are a few theories. He may have just been born significantly larger than the others. He may have had a devastating case of gigantism that made him the tallest Egyptian royal ever. On the other hand, he may have come from a race of giants and had giant's blood coursing through his veins. We just don't know the answer. And considering this famous ruler lived nearly 5,000 years ago, we probably never will. Do you think giants are real? Let me know in the comments and thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you next time.